Welcome to the introduction tutorial of uh, GGE, Gorgi's uh, game engine. Uh, in this tutorial I will um, show you how you install the SDK and uh, I will later on also talk about how it works behind the scenes. If you're not interested of that and only want to uh, s get started using it, you can skip that part to and just go to the next tutorial and continue from there. Alright, uh, so um, I assume you already have uh, the GG SDK downloaded. Uh, what I have here is a development version. Uh, I haven't released it yet. Um, so some things might have changed it, but this will not change. Uh, I am using the CMake uh, build system to generate the um, Visual Studio project or make files and uh, all that so I support several other build systems um, I'm not an expert on CMake actually some things are wrong but uh, it works and I'm glad for that I took the CMake temp template from uh, SFMO which is the library the engine is based on um, anyway so let's get started um, just type in the path to the source code. Um, I usually also create a new folder uh, where I put the generated uh, uh, project in uh, because I like to keep the root folder clean. Uh, so we press uh, configure and yes. I'm doing this for Visual Studio 10 because I, it got some special requirements requirements to it um, so I'll show through that uh, the thing is that um, uh, Visual Studio has a special thing with its release and uh, debug uh, versions of the project um, I link against the correct project uh, of um, SFML debug or release depending on, on what you choose in CMake if you change in re uh, release or debug in um, the Visual Studio project, nothing uh, will change. Actually, it will just build a release or debug version of the said uh, of the GGE project, but still link against the same same um, library files, which will generate an error. I really don't know how to fix this, as I'm uh, no expert on CMake. Um, but anyway, we have here um, where you write it. You write uh, either release or debug. We want debug. So um, for your other um, build systems, you won't have to have any problem with this. But um, just especially Visual Studio has some problem with linking debug against release and release against debug and stuff like that. So you have to be sure. If I want a debug version, I have to write debug here and that's it. Uh, another problem in Windows you might uh, uh, come up against is to find the SFML uh, directory. Uh, I had uh, a hell of a time to find it, uh, uh, get it to find it, but um, I eventually solved it by adding a, an environmental variable called SFML dir. So you just have to add this to um, your system and uh, it will find it for you. If you don't like to do that, you can just write it in for hand. It will say it couldn't find SFML and ask you to write it, uh, write the path to it. Um, yeah, uh, for this uh, t tutorial, we want example so I can show you how it works. Uh, let's configure and generate. So now when the uh, Visual Studio project has been generated by CMake, um, we can open it up here um, to actually build it. Uh, why I require administration rights to my Visual Studio is because of the install process. Uh, I noticed it when I wanted to install SFML. Uh, on the later versions of Windows, like Windows 7, 
you won't uh, because Dudu doesn't get access to program and files, uh, so it can't uh, install uh, the library I even though we tell it to. So I said it to have administration rights for that. It's only a Windows specific thing again, so um, yeah. All right. Uh, so here we have the different uh, projects. Uh, what we're interested in is install. Uh, I've already done my compile, so uh, here's uh, no, nothing is done uh, because uh, it's already done, so you don't have to wait. Uh, let's skip to that folder. So as you see, we have uh, the bin folder, examples, include, and uh, the library. So everything is put into here and we also get the license with it um, so it's pretty much done now for juice uh, I'll show in the next tutorial how um, I how you set up a project to use it because we are pretty new to working in Visual Studio at all and so on um, so but if you don't want to see anything more and just get started, you can skip now because nothing more important is gonna come out. So um, I'm gonna show at least an example. I've already done this uh, to test it, but uh, you get here, hello world. A simple hello world application with the engine. You can move around. This is this is all done with uh, classes that are already in the engine. Nothing uh, done by the user. Uh, so it's it's um, pretty complete already, but uh, there's still things to do. Uh, uh, so if you don't want to copy in the DLLs, uh, you can uh, set a path to um, the binary folder which you should do instead of uh, putting the DLLs in um, system 32 uh, because that will only bite you in the end so let's add this um, we got the folder here done uh, and now we should be able to start without DLLs in the folder um, so yeah all right uh, here are the resources that are used to generate uh, all the inside this is the texture Qtha. Um these are wavefront uh, object files, uh, the material and the object. These defines the actual um, model inside the engine. Uh, your Blender or Maya can export to this format without a problem. Uh, the only thing for the engine you have to remember is to triangulate uh, everything. So um, everything is in triangles. I will eventually add so that the engine does it for you so you don't always have to do it but pretty good to remember to always do it's a good habit um, alright so um, that's it for installing it uh, I'll pretty soon get started with uh, the details of the inner workings alright so to start the inner workings of how the engine works um, the engine is uh, multi-threaded uh, but the user do not have to do anything thread safe or anything like that because he will only be allowed to work in the logic area of the engine so it's pretty safe for him to work so he won't even notice that it's multi-threaded uh, there might be some thread specific things it says like uh, oh you are not allowed to do that here because of the thread safety insurance but um, pretty much you will be able to just work like if it was single threaded um, 
the engine uses uh, three threads. We got the main thread, the application. We got the graphics thread, and we got the logics thread. Uh, the user will be working in here. The graphics and the application will contain itself. Uh, uh, later on, I might add an um, lo loading thread, so you know you can just say uh, load these uh, set of files and report back to me the progress of your loading. Um, um, yeah, it can be pretty useful, make it a lot easier for the user to um, uh, have a responsive interface while still loading, uh, but it will also expose to the user that there exists threads. At the moment there is no exposure to that except for the interface classes which act just like, uh, for instance, the sprite interface class act like a normal sprite he wouldn't even know that it is an interface class if it wasn't in the name of the class well i don't think there is much more to cover the engine is still pretty new and still in development so it's pretty small even though it's <laughs> getting quite big for me to remember everything but um i can't go more into detail without um uh, yeah, spoiling other tutorials to come because uh, if I go more into detail, you won't need all the tutorials and it will get too much on one video. So I'm gonna cut it here and uh, see you next tutorial. I hope this were worth learning for.